Now coming to the principle of contradiction, principle of identity. Yeah. We need both the Western and the, the Eastern understand. We need both for our thinking. Epistemology is necessary. But we emphasize the principle of identity rather than the principle of uh, contradiction. See, I see, I can see my relation in opposition to you or in relation to you. See, sometimes because we want to see our identity in opposition to the other. Most of our problems in the world is because of this. We see the, the other as opposite. In the epistemology, we need this to, for the principle anal to analyze, to scientific progress, to see the distinctions that we are not confused. We need this principle of contradiction. But it goes to a kind of world view, this epistemology, then becomes my, I am against my brother, or I am against the other country, our country is against the other country, our culture against the other culture, our language against the other, other language, our religion against the other religion. So we could see also that on the other hand, in the Indian understanding of emphasizing the principle of identity, we see the relationality. We don't see in opposition. So we always seek uh, in, in what way we can relate to the other. So he, that person also believes in God. Formerly we have an exclusivism, we Christian believes everything is idol worship. Now, we have not seen what are the, no Hindu would say this idol is God. You see, it leads me to, to God. You see, it is said they may put flower, they may the worship, they give bath to the idol, all that, but they don't say exactly this is exactly God. That is for me that makes me relate to God. So we don't exclude, we don't, we, we, uh, no more consider them as idol worship. They are worshipping in their own way. Probably they must be led to a higher understanding. Yeah. Symbols lead us to reality. This, we must we have to be open to this understanding. Then we will be more open to also relate with them in that sense. Then we see also goodness in our religion too. Yeah. Precisely the reason, I, I, the, for in Christology, that is precisely what I was telling at the end of uh, my talk, that the traditional Christology is only 50%. Because we are, we are using uh, the, the principle of opposition or, or contradiction, epistemology of contradiction, or epistemology principle of contradiction, understanding Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is seen in opposition to the other. Then we have the question of the uniqueness of Christ. All these are in a way meaningless in Indian context. The, the Indian, we in dialogue with other people. If, if I say Jesus is different, he is unique, he is in opposition to the other, then they'll say he is like anybody else. What's a big deal? He is like any other religious founder. Buddha is there, Jai Mahavira is there, the, 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 uh, the founder of Jainism, and then Muhammad is there, Islam. And Jesus is one more, one more, another historical person who found a, or a religion. So they don't see, they cannot see this like anybody else because when you put the principle of contradiction, or the Christology is the, the, the heart of the matter in the sense in Christology we find the relationality, provided our thinking about Jesus is expanded. This is what Keshav Chandra said, KC said, one of the, con con he was uh, so much influenced Jesus Christ, he was not baptized. But he said, we, most of the Christians have the small Christ. The small Christ you can keep along with the others. The Christ is the larger Christ, the Logos, who was present before the historical existence. He is present also after the resurrection. He is present in India and Egypt and uh, in, in, in Europe and um, every, everywhere, Africa, he says everywhere. This, this universe, this Christ who is present everywhere, whom we experience, this Christ cannot be compared. The moment you make a compare, you make it small, then it's comparable. Then you use the principle of uh, uh, contradiction. Yes. So it is, in, it is the, it's a, it's a, it's an expanded Christology. Christ Christology that is not limited by boundaries. Actually, I'm writing a book on the Christ beyond boundaries. The, it's not, not uh, caught in dogmas and doctrines uh, which have Greek philosophical background. The Indian philosophy can uh, much more open up the mystery of Christ. We can never exhaust the mystery of Christ, but then it can give us new insight into the mystery of Christ. Therefore, us, for us Indian theologians, we are, we are blessed with the two worldviews. We are Christian, Western, also the heritage of the Indian uh, Christian thinking. Yeah, so Indian, Indian philosophical and the Indian uh, way of cultural thinking. So we, we can see the, the, the connections.
the, 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 between the two. You can synthesize much more. So it is not a contradiction, it's actually it is much more aspiring the vision of Christ. So he, uh, we consider him because he is the first one to use, make use of the Indian philosophical systems to interpret Christ. He very explicitly said, like the Thomas Aquinas and others made use of Greek philosophy. And also fathers of the church made use of Greek philosophy. We could make use of the Indian philosophy to explain who Jesus Christ is. That would be meaningful to the, the Indian, Indian audience, the hearers. They can understand from that perspective. But this year was a man who was a Brahmin convert, and then he, he was from Bengal, and he was uh, he not only preached, he also was serving the in Pakistan, present Pakistan area of Sindh. He went out to reach out to the those who were suffering from plague and other sicknesses and so on. But he was so deep in his knowledge of Hindu scriptures, Hindu philosophy, as well as the Greek, Latin, and the fathers of the church, Aquinas. And he started three journals, one after another, the, the three, three journals to explain uh, Jesus Christ, the Christian message, in a language understandable to the people, all in English. Mm -hmm. And then he wanted to meet Pope, but then the Rome didn't, you went to Rome, but you did not get a permission to see because he was not dressed as the, the formal dress for holy, you did not get. But he was in, in, in England, he gave lectures, and very good English, would write very good English, and then the, he, was, he, he, is, he, is a, he, he was a man with, uh, who knew so many languages, kind of fully growth, and very well versed in languages. Mm -hmm. And so he could say that he experienced Christ. The whole question is where it's not an intellectual knowledge, he really experienced Christ, and when he became, and, and he said there is a, in, in India, there is uh, sadhana dharma and samaj dharma. That means it is a, you have a, socially you are a Hindu, but in belief you are a Christian or Catholic. So he said, he, <clears throat> he claimed that, sorry, he claimed that he is a Hindu Catholic. So I will not accept any of the, of the, of the, the dress and other things of the Europeanism. That is not Christianity, he said. Yes. And then all what he said hundred years ago came true in Vatican II with regard to the language, he said the liturgy of the language must be the regional languages, not Latin. And the singing must be using Indian classical music, not Gregorian chant. And then he's the, the then his bishops and must be from the local place, not from the foreigners coming there. Though he had a very good relation with one of our MSFS Bishop Pelwa, Nagpur, who encouraged him to go on theologizing in this way. But then the apostolic delegate of that time stopped him from theologizing and he stopped his journals. And so he was a man who said, so some articles came, he said, a prophet not recognized in his own time. And he said, religious life, modern slavery, religious life must be ashram. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he started an ashram in there. So he was a, a man who uh, was completely dedicated to Christ and also dedicated to the, the culture and the philosophy of, of our time. Then he made use, in the beginning, he made use of the uh, Ramanuja philosophy, that is the second type of philosophy. The first one is Shankara, is Advaita, non-dualism, or not one, not two. So he made use of this philosophy to explain the meaning of Jesus Christ, a second person of the Trinity. And he wrote also hymns like Ephraim of uh, Syrian. He not only wrote philosophical, theological treatises or uh, um, articles, papers, but also uh, hymns in Sanskrit, uh, which are very, very uh, meaningful with the Trinity and also incarnation. Actually, Paniket takes also the tradition of Brahmabandha Ubadhyay, like many others, yeah, making use of the Advaitic, uh, not one, not two, intuition. That means God and the world are not two, they are also not one. They are distinct, but not separate. So that's why he first, first uh, philosophy is cosmotheandrism. That means Cosmos, Theos, and other, <clears throat> all three are related, interrelated. He says other things are all Thomistic understanding, contingent being, absolute being, and all these are speculation. The reality is world is there, human beings are there, God is there. So they are interrelated. So this interrelationship, and he sees Jesus Christ as the, the symbol or the reality that, is, uh, that brings together all three, human, world, and God. So this, this Christology actually takes also from the the, the letter to the Colossians he is in the 115 and following he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation everything is created in him and through him and for him 
So he says, if he is the Alpha and the Omega of creation, everything is Christic. Everything is a Christopher. You are a manifestation of Christ. I am a Christopher. I am a manifestation of Christ. If I am not there, that dimension of Christ is not present in this world. So everything is a manifestation of Christ. Because everything is Christified. So this Christ is much uh, more than the Christology. Christology is very narrow and then sectarian. So the, uh, that's why I said 50% of the uh, traditional Christology is not the whole Christology. He always speaks of totus Christus, the whole Christ. Mm -hmm. 